Welcome back to another episode of Connecting Through Stories from New Hampshire Humanities. Click the link in the description below for lesson plans and activities to go along with my next book. This week I've chosen Who Says Women Can't Be Doctors? The Story of Elizabeth Blackwell by Tanya Lee Stone and illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. Here are some questions for you to think about either before or after your reading. What is your dream? How have gender roles for women changed over the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries? What other firsts have women contributed to the field of medicine? Who Says Women Can't Be Doctors? The Story of Elizabeth Blackwell by Tanya Lee Stone and illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. I'll bet you've met plenty of doctors in your life and I'll bet lots of them are women. Well, you might find this hard to believe, but there was once a time when girls weren't allowed to become doctors. Back in the 1830s, there were lots of things girls couldn't be. Girls were only supposed to become wives and mothers, or maybe teachers or seamstresses. Being a doctor was definitely not an option. What do you think changed all that? Or should I say, who? Elizabeth Blackwell, that's who. A tiny wisp of a girl who wanted to explore around every corner and who never walked away from a challenge. This was a girl who had once carried her brother over her head until he backed down from their fight. A girl who tried sleeping on the hard floor with no covers just to toughen herself up. A girl who climbed up to her roof and stretched out as far as possible with a spyglass to see what was happening on the other side of town. But she hadn't always wanted to be a doctor. Actually, blood made her queasy. One time, her teacher used a bull's eyeball to show students how eyes work. Elizabeth was repulsed. And she hadn't always wanted to help the sick. She had no patience for being sick herself. Whenever she felt ill, she simply went for a walk outside. Once, when she was little, she hid in a closet until she felt better. She hated anyone fussing over her. So why did she become the first woman doctor? Because one person believed she could and told Elizabeth she was just the kind of smart, determined girl who could change the world. That person was Mary Donaldson. When Elizabeth was 24, she went to visit her friend who was very ill. Mary told Elizabeth that she would have much preferred being examined by a woman. She urged Elizabeth to consider becoming a doctor. At first, Elizabeth could not believe her ears. Even if a girl could be a doctor, why would she want to be one? But Mary's idea gnawed at Elizabeth, a female doctor. Elizabeth thought about it the second she got up in the morning. She thought about it during sewing circles. She thought about it over tea. She even dreamed about it at night. Finally, Elizabeth asked doctors and friends. Some thought it was a good idea, but didn't think there was any way it could be done. Others thought it wasn't right. Women are too weak for such hard work. Women aren't smart enough. Ha 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 ha. Some people actually laughed at her. They thought she was joking. Elizabeth didn't see anything funny about a woman becoming a doctor. She thought it was a fine idea, and her family supported her. She worked as a teacher to earn money and applied to a handful of medical schools, but they all sent back the same answer. No. No women allowed. She tried other schools. More letters arrived at her door. One by one, the answer was always the same. 28 no's in all. 
In different ways, the letters all said the same thing. Women cannot be doctors. They should not be doctors. But Elizabeth didn't believe in couldn't or shouldn't. She refused to give up. She was as stubborn as a mule, quite rightly. One day, an envelope arrived from a college. She opened it and everything changed. The answer was, Yes, Elizabeth packed her bags for Geneva Medical School in upstate New York. The townspeople were expecting her. As she walked down the street, some pointed and stared. They whispered to themselves that she must be wicked or crazy. Elizabeth thought that at least the students wanted her there, except they didn't. The teachers had let the students vote on whether or not to allow Elizabeth to come, and the boys, figuring the school would never really accept a girl, said yes. They planned to turn the whole thing into a big joke, but the joke was on them. Their raucous laughter turned to silence as ladylike Elizabeth took her seat. They wondered what kind of girl she was the kind of girl who wouldn't take the bait. Some thought a girl wouldn't be able to keep up, except Elizabeth did keep up, often studying past midnight. Elizabeth proved she was as smart as any boy, and soon the boys wanted to know what Elizabeth thought about this or that. It took the townspeople longer to accept her. Some people are afraid of anything new or different not Elizabeth. On January 23rd, 1849, Elizabeth graduated with the highest grades in her whole class. She had become the first woman doctor in America. Although many people were proud, others were angry. One doctor even wrote, I hope for the honor of humanity that she will be the last. But as you know, she certainly was not. Times certainly have changed since the days of Elizabeth Blackwell, but equality for many women in the United States is still a work in progress. As always, we welcome you to join the conversation by commenting below. And if you're able, please consider donating to our Connections program so we can continue this work across the state of New Hampshire. Thank you and see you next month.